We knew he was dead. It is finished, he said. And we watched as his life ebbed away. Then we all stood around till the guards took him down. Joseph begged for his body that day. It was late afternoon when we went to the tomb, left his body and we sealed up the grave. Oh, I know how you feel. His death was so real. But please listen and hear what I say. I'm just seeing Jesus. I seen Jesus, our precious Lord, our life, and I knew, and I knew, he really saw me too, he really saw me too, as he till now. first heard those kind, gentle words, asking what was her reason for tears. And I sobbed in despair, my Lord is not there. He said, child, it is, is I, I am here.
welcome our little children to right now. The Children's Easter March begins right now, 2024. Come on, kids.
Amen. Didn't you enjoy that this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking for Braylon Edmonds. Is Braylon here today? Braylon, are you? Would you stand for us, Braylon? It's so good to see you. Braylon is actively serving in the United States Air Force. We want to welcome him to the service this morning. We're glad you're here. Amen. Amen. The Lord. You re remain standing in clear view. We appreciate men and women that are serving for our freedom that we might stand here and worship today. Amen. Listen, praise the Lord. Let's lift it out together as we sing the first and last stanza of I Know, I Know He Lives. You lift it out this morning as we sing. I serve a risen Savior. this morning. Good morning. Man, if, you are, if you've been here a long time or you're a first-time visitor today, we are so thankful you're here. We look forward to worshiping. We already had a great sunrise service. We had about 350 people show up at 730. And so I praise God that we serve a risen Savior. Say amen. We have much to celebrate today so y'all can hoop and holler and just have a good time because we ought to shout. It's good news every single Sunday. So I'm glad you're here. If you're a guest with us, there's a Guest Connect card in front of you right in your pew. We'd love you to fill that out. We have a free gift for you at the Welcome Center right out back. And we just praise God you're here. I'm going to pray and we'll continue to worship. Father, Lord, I thank you for the beautiful morning you've given us. Got another chance to come together as the body of Christ and make much of your name. Lord, it's that name Jesus that draws us together this morning. And Lord, I've, I've been to that empty tomb, Lord, and I'm thankful, Lord, that, that 2,000 years ago you got up from the grave, you beat death, hell in the grave, so that we can have hope today. And I pray as we sing, as we preach, everything we do today, we do to make much of Jesus. And it's in his name I pray, amen. Man, would you stand just one more time with us as we worship the Lord? Stand once again this morning as we worship. One day when heaven was filled with his praise, and one day when sin was as black as could be, yes, Jesus came forth.
light shined among us, His glory revealed. Living He loved me, and dying He saved me. Buried He carried my sins far away. Rising He justified freely forever. And one day He's coming for oh, glory. Good singing, church. You may be seated this time. disobeyed the Father. We were then held captive by our sin. The law of God demanded a sacrifice. We 
restoring to himself his own again. So the Lamb, his only Son, was freely offered. Atonement for our sin forever made. The innocent and holy still God and God only would ransom and redeem us back again. Hallelujah, praise the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. This is not a performance. If you came for a performance, you in the wrong place. We've come to worship a risen Savior today, and He's worthy of all of our praise. Come on, next singers. Y'all come on down. Preacher said he's preaching really short today, so we're going to sing a little longer. Amen.
Oh, count the stars ablaze. Only one could breathe life into clay. Only one can quiet raging seas. Only one has power to redeem. I just had a great time, praise the Lord. Pastor, choir, you may be seated. Pastor, you come with a met. Do we need to let everybody welcome each other, or can we forget that today? Uh, y'all do that after the service, okay? Praise the Lord. Choir, y'all just be seated. Good morning. 
Man, y'all are, I love it. I love it. Um, I, I was ready to preach yesterday morning. I'm going to tell you about 730. I thank God for Christ honoring, Christ exalting music. About 7.30 yesterday morning, I was going to Walmart. I took my seven-year-old daughter with me. And, and Dr. Dr. Jeff, y'all, y'all sing a song. Carrie, y'all sing a song. And it's called the Throne Room Song. And y'all know that song. And there's a line in that song that they got to yesterday morning. We were getting ready to walk into Walmart. And I, I said, Rebecca, when, the, when that song says the veil was torn, what does that mean? And she said, I I don't know, Daddy. And so I began to explain to her about the Old Testament sacrificial system. And I started to explain to her about the high priest that got to go once a year into the Holy of Holies. And, And then we started to talk about when that veil was torn, it allowed us to have access to Holy God. And before I knew it, I was in tears in Walmart parking lot just thinking about the, 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 what Christ did for us. Man, I wanted to shout. This morning, we ought to shout. Say amen. amen. Man, it, it, this, is a, this is the best place to be on a Sunday morning. Thank you, choir. Man, y'all did a phenomenal job. You know why they did a phenomenal job? Because they're singing about someone that's in them. Amen. Y'all with me? Y'all awake? Y'all ought to be awake, okay? It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great, great, great day. Happy Resurrection Day. We have so much to celebrate today. I'm so excited to be here. Turn with me to Matthew 28. If you'll listen fast, I'll preach fast. Say amen. We can do it. I won't close three times like Benny. <laughs> Benny just keeps on circling and circling and circling. I'm, 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 we're going to go this morning. Matthew chapter 28, it's an account of the Easter message. Uh, There's many accounts, but I want to read the one out of Matthew chapter 28. Now, I'll let you stay seated this morning. It's a little bit longer account, but I want you to read with me the, the Word of God. Beginning in verse number one, Matthew chapter 28, and the Bible says this. Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, And the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone, and that angel sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him, and they became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus. He's been crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. That'd be a great place to say amen. Amen. Just as he said, come see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you'll see him. Behold, I've told you this. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to the report as it was to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them, and he greeted them, and they came up and took hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. And then Jesus said the same thing. He said this, do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city. They reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said this, you're to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while you were asleep. And if this should come to the governor's ears, we'll win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews as it is to this day. But the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. Then they saw him and they worshiped him. For the Bible says some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying this, all authority has been given to me on heaven 
and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Father, I pray, Lord, you use my words today. Lord, make them your words. Point people towards Jesus. Lord, this world needs hope. And hope lies in one man. And his name is Jesus Christ. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. It's the foundation of Christianity. It's what we stand on. If he did not get up from the dead, you should get rid of this book, fire this preacher, and sell this church. Say amen. We'd be wasting our time. Because, uh, because if there was no resurrection, we would have no Bible, we would have no message, and we would have no church. But the Word of God says the angel told them he is not here. He's alive. He's risen. Y'all with me? Say amen just to humor me. It's Easter. Get with it. He's alive. He is risen. We as Christians cannot explain the resurrection, but it's the resurrection that explains us. The Bible says we are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. That's why for 2,000 years we've gathered together in churches worshiping Jesus Christ. So we preach this morning. We sing this morning because he's alive. He is risen. And this morning we open up the word of God to this 28th chapter. And I've got three truths for you. Three truths very quickly. You see the tomb is empty. And I believe it is. I've been there. I've looked inside. And if that tomb is empty, it changes our priorities. It changes who we are. Three truths. Number one, very quickly. He's alive and it happened on a Sunday. I thank God for Sundays. Man, I look forward to Sundays. I look forward to gathering together as the body of Jesus Christ. It says in verse number one, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, all over Greenville County this morning, churches just like ours gathered together for a sunrise service. How many of y'all like the sunrise? How many of y'all are more like lunchtime people? Say amen. Man, I love sunrise. There's something about getting up and looking at that cross, that sun coming up over the horizon. It's absolutely beautiful. It was the first day of the week on a Sunday morning when those ladies went to the grave. And guess what? He wasn't there. They could not find him. They could not discover him. I share with you today, we have church on Sunday because that's the day Jesus got up. We celebrate on Sunday because that's the day Jesus got up. You say, preacher, so what? Why does that matter? Why is that important? What day we gather? You have to realize the people we read about in Scripture, they worshiped on Saturday. Saturday was their Sabbath. That's the day they came together. They were Saturday worshipers. And the resurrection of Jesus changed everything. It turned the world on its heel. Everything Jesus, everything changed because of that occurrence. Sunday is when Jesus got up. I love Sundays at Clearview. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss. I love this choir. You can't go anywhere and hear a better choir. Say amen. Amen. I love the spirit in this place. I I love the fellowship in this place. I I love almost all of (laughs) y'all. There's a few knuckleheads in the group, but I love y'all. There's something about coming together on a Sunday, about gathering together. We come together Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. There's something special about gathering together. As a body, we need each other. Listen to me. We need each other. God designed it that way. God designed us for relationship. God designed us to be together in the 
body. We come together to, to celebrate. Margaret Huff, many of y'all, y'all might not know Margaret Huff. We've got so many new people. Margaret Huff is, is 98, 97. In June, she'll be 98. And I visited with her this week in her hospital room. She said, preacher, you have no idea how much I love my church and how much I miss my church. She, she said that to you. She said that to over and over and over. There's something, look at me. This is a, a large church, but I'm going to tell you, this is a family. And I praise God for this family. And I, I anticipate and I look forward to coming together to worship. Jesus got up from the grave on a Sunday. That's why we worship on Sundays today. It's a great, great celebration. Secondly, not only is he alive and it happened on a Sunday. Secondly, he's alive so you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Notice what happened. The ladies came. He was gone. They went to Galilee. Jesus met them. And I love what he says in verse number 10. He says this, and somebody needs to hear this today. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That's a message this world needs to hear. I, thought, I started to think this morning, Brother Travis, what if on Easter all you had was Easter basket and Easter breakfast. You see, my kids love the Easter basket. They got their candy this morning, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to tell you, that's just, a, that's just a side note. We come together as the body of Christ to worship a risen Savior. There's so much more to Easter than family. There's so much more to Easter than Easter baskets. I'm going to tell you, it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's alive. Do not be afraid. There's fear all around us. We live in an election year, and I'm going to tell you, I worry about what's going to happen. You with me? You go to the grocery, I worry about the economy. There's lots of things I worry about that I cannot control. So much fear around us about the future, about the economy. Let's get very personal. There's somebody in this room that needs to hear those words, do not fear. You're facing some things that, that maybe nobody else in this room knows about. You're dealing with some things, and life is hard. Do you know the disciples? I thought about that this week. The disciples the ladies, how did they feel on Saturday? Friday was the crucifixion, Sunday the resurrection, but I imagine Saturday was a long day. What do we do? Where do we go? What's next? And they began to scatter. And a thought hit me, so many Christians are living in the light of Saturday instead of the reality of Sunday. You see, we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to, to live in a constant state of turmoil. We are born again Christians. Therefore, we have hope no matter the situation. Amen? No matter what goes on, we have hope. We preach about Good Friday when he was crucified. We preach about the resurrection. But what about Saturday? Saturday was a day when hope seemed to be lost. Jesus lay in that grave. The disciples were scattered. They were living in fear. They had almost accepted defeat. But this morning we come because we know the rest of the story. We know he got up. And there's some things in your life you cannot control. There's some things in this world we cannot control. There's some things that worry me. But I come, to tell, I come today to tell you, do not fear. Have hope. He's alive. He got up from the grave. This is temporary. We've got eternity to look forward to. There might be some discomfort, but I'm going to tell you, we're going to live forever somewhere. If you know Jesus, ah, that's good news. That's good news. That's good news. Can I encourage you this morning? That Sunday 
when the sun came up, there was an empty tomb. There was an empty, empty tomb. He got up from the grave, and that changed everything. Thirdly, at the end of this passage, Jesus gathered all of them together, and he simply said this. He simply said this. He gave us the great commission. He said this, go and make disciples. Can, can I be very honest with you? There are people all around you that need Jesus. I'm closing, I promise. Listen, there are people all around you that need Jesus Christ. He said, go and make disciples. Church, we've got the best news in town. We ought to shout it from the hilltops. I got a text from our associational missionary this week that, that startled me, that, that really disturbed me. You see, for years he was in Utah. He, he was the, the, the Southern Baptist guy out there in Utah. The, the, he, he worked with church planners, etc. And he made this statement, Utah is one of the most lost, lost places in the world. He said, in Utah, every single day, 54 people die. Of those 54 people, 53 do not know Jesus Christ. Mind-blowing. Then he said, what do you think the numbers are in Greenville County? Greenville County, where we, the Bible Belt. And he said this, there's 14 people that die every single day in Greenville County. 11 of them don't know Jesus. 14 people die, 11 of them don't know Jesus. Church, I want you to hear me. We've got the best news around. Our news is not temporary. Our news does not involve a ball team which goes up and down. Our news, listen to me, our news lasts forever. Our news is eternal and we need to share it. He said this, I died on the cross, I got up from the grave, not so that you can keep it to yourself. He said, you ought to shout it from the rooftops. Go and make disciples. Tell the good news. People are lost and dying and going to hell all around us. And I'm going to tell you, I want to shout in here, but I also want to shout out there. Because what we have changes lives. Say amen. amen. The veil was torn. I looked inside. I, I'm going to ask us to sing a little bit different invitation song. I've asked Travis to prepare that song, that, that throne room song. Listen to me. Easter means this, that when Jesus Christ died, that veil was torn. Listen to me. Don't, don't shut me off. Listen to me. That veil was torn from top to bottom. It was something God had to do. And he said this, welcome. 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 When they get to that part about the veil was torn, y'all just stand up and shout. It allowed us, sinful human beings, access to holy God through Jesus Christ. And I ask you this morning, do you know him? Not about him. We, we talked about that at sunrise. I, I don't want that, that, that knowledge just you know up here. Do you believe in your heart that it's true and you're staking your eternity on it, that relationship with Jesus Christ? That's the only hope you have. The only thing we have is Jesus. The only thing that will last is Christ. So I'm going to ask that choir to sing for us just, just to lead us to the throne room. To point us towards Jesus, and I want us to worship. But I ask you this question, if you don't know him, if you're not sure, I'd love to invite you to come, to come, to come. I'd love to tell you about a man that changed my life when I was nine years old. There's others in this room that could tell you about a man that changed their lives. His name is Jesus Christ. You might want to come join this church, I don't know what God's doing in your life. You just might want to come and, and kneel your knee and pray at this altar. But listen to me. We worship. Listen, listen, listen. We worship because he's alive. Father, I am thankful 
Lord, for the greatest gift ever given to man, your son. Lord, I'm thankful he lived a perfect life. He died a death for each and every one of us. And my prayer simply is this, if there's someone in this room that's never accepted, that they're not sure where, 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 where they would go when they took their last breath, Lord, I'd love to talk to them today about a man named Jesus. Father, as we worship, Lord, we're just simply here, Lord, not to put a performance on, but to make much of who you are. I thank Jesus for the cross. I thank Jesus for the resurrection. Lord, I'm thankful he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And Lord, one day we're going to see him. Lord, I pray everyone in this room knows that. But if they don't, I pray today might be the day they settle that account. For it's in your holy name I pray. Amen and, and amen. Would you stand? Would you stand? Come this morning, wherever you are, just come. Spirit moves and breathes all around, all around, all good and perfect things flowing down, flowing down. If all of the heavens are singing along with the saints and the elders, in glory our song and the praises they sing never seem to get old. Yet I'll stay here forever singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, over all. You Before you, 
Grab a seat for just one second. God is good, amen. amen. Just a couple of reminders, a couple of announcements, and we will be dismissed. Um, Cameron Henderson, where are you in the room? Cameron Henderson, would you stand up? Cameron was in the, um, he's a Marine, just returned from eight and a half month deployment from the Middle East in Israel in Gaza conflict. The great grandson of Linda Higgins. Can we give him a hand? Let's stand up and give him a hand. Amen, amen. Y'all grab up and down, up and down. Um, I also just want to make a couple of recognitions. Chris and Kim McConnell. Chris, you're up there. Where's Kim? Chris, where are you? You're where are where? They're pointing there. Kim's, y'all need to get together. Um, but this is their last Sunday. De uh, Chris has been a, a faithful, faithful deacon, been a great, great couple, but they're moving to North Carolina. We need to vote on that. We're not going to let them go, but we're going to miss them and love them. And thank God so much for them. And so uh, just praise God for y'all. And I, I told them this, if God calls you away, he will call you to another church. So if you're in the process of moving, I'm going to tell you, he'll find you a place to worship. Say amen. amen. Last one, um, Chris, Nikki, the Stromlins, and Jacob. All the Stromlins just stand up. But Chris and Nikki and Jacob, and, and uh, they, they've been with us for three years now. They are preparing to move to Thailand. And so they've been on the mission. They've come out. Well, they're always on mission, um, but they are heading back to the mission field. And so we're praying for God's blessings on them and him to use them. And so we are so thankful to have y'all for three years, but we pray God's timing is perfect. And so we're praying for doors to open for them. And I thank God uh, just so much for your family. We love y'all. Amen. Amen. Y'all grab a seat. And also, what's Easter without a salvation? Come on, Liam. 
And this is a brave young man. Liam got to ask Jesus Christ into his life not too long ago. And he said, I want to make that public today. So that, where are you going, buddy? It's just all right, you can go. You're good. Uh, but man, we're going to follow that up in baptism. If y'all rejoice in that, just say amen. amen. Has it been a good day? Amen. Man, every Sunday's a good day, so it's been a good day. Thank you all so much. We love you. We're going to pray for the Stromlins, pray for, for God to use them in a powerful way um, as they head back overseas. But God is good. Listen to me. Every day is resurrection day because Jesus got up. So we have just as much hope next Sunday as we do this Sunday. Say amen. Amen. Let's pray for them, and we will be dismissed. No service tonight. We'll see you back Wednesday night. Father, Lord, I am so thankful. Lord, together as a body this morning, Lord, we have so much to celebrate, so much to be thankful for. Lord, you got up from that grave, and that gives us hope today. That gives us a future today. I thank you for this young man coming today and saying, I publicly profess Jesus Christ is my Lord.